dolls, so preciously powerless and delicate. A benevolent object of a child's affection. A lovely little companion with ever-gazing and ever-empty eyes. But you have to wonder what those eyes have seen. Who held that doll once before? What happened to them? And if that motionless, loving doll is so innocent after all? In 1918, 17-year-old Aikichi Suzuki travels to Sapporo, Japan for a marine exhibition. While there, he searches for a gift to bring back to his two-year-old sister, Okiku, upon his return. Browsing the shops of the shopping district, he finds the perfect souvenir, a doll, 16 inches tall, with dark eyes and hair. He purchases the figurine, unaware of the tragedy looming in his near future. Little Okiku was delighted with her present, so much so that she even named it after herself. Okika and her doll were inseparable. Wherever she went, her beloved doll was sure to be nearby. Unfortunately, a year later, Okiku caught a cold, which quickly turned out to be a severe case of influenza. The toddler eventually succumbed to her high fever and illness, devastating the Suzuki family. They kept Okiku the doll in their household altar and prayed to it in memory of their deceased daughter. The tragedy hit the family hard, but they marched forward with their lives until one day they noticed something strange about the doll. When first purchased, the doll's hair was cut short at the shoulders with blunt ends, but now its hair extended past its chest, the ends ragged. Unnerved, the family trimmed the hair to its original style, but as time passed, the doll's hair once again grew. The family believed the strange phenomenon was the result of their daughter's unrested spirit residing within her precious doll. Trying to escape the tragedy, the Suzuki family moved in 1938, but they left the Okiku doll behind with priests at a nearby temple. The priests regularly trim the doll's hair, but it always grows back. The doll's hair was concluded to be human, but science has yet to explain the strange phenomenon. Today, Okiku still resides at the temple, where visitors from all over the world have traveled to see her. After the death of her sister in 2000, paranormal investigator Jane Harris was fascinated with supernatural phenomenon, specifically with haunted dolls, which is how she ended up with a doll named Peggy. Peggy's former owner claimed she suffered horrific nightmares and hallucinations caused by the doll. And even with the help of two priests, nothing could stop the barrage of emotional torment. Jane took the doll in hopes of studying it, and shortly after posting a few pictures of Peggy online, the emails came flooding in. Jane received a slew of messages from nearly 80 strangers who said the mere sight of Peggy caused a wide variety of bizarre occurrences. There were reports of computers freezing when Peggy's picture was on screen, while others experienced exploding light bulbs or a deep sense of dread and sadness when gazing upon the doll. In more extreme cases, people had brief flashes of mental institutions accompanied with migraines and all-consuming anxiety and chest pains. A British woman even had a heart attack after watching a video of the doll online. Wanting answers, Jane turned to clairvoyance, who told her the doll was possessed by a malevolent spirit, a survivor from the Holocaust who wished to do them harm. Jane herself complained of severe migraines and disturbing dreams after being around Peggy. She once tried to place a crucifix necklace over the doll, only to later find it gone. Despite requests to take Peggy to public paranormal events, Jane keeps the doll to herself for now, while she conducts her own private investigation.
In 1972, Carrie Walton visited an abandoned building to conquer a childhood fear. While exploring the house, he was terrified when he came face to face with a marionette doll sitting under the porch. Sufficiently spooked, he grabbed the doll and returned home, where he tried to ignore how uneasy it made him feel. But curiosity got the better of him, and he took the doll to an antique museum, hoping to trace its origins. Museum workers concluded the nails attaching the doll's feet to its legs were over 200 years old, and based on the style of doll, they believed it came from Eastern Europe. But answers did nothing to stop the strange activity. When the doll was taken outside, it rained without warning, and picture frames fell from their places wherever the doll went. Dogs who passed by would snarl and snap at the inanimate object. People told Carrie the doll moved of its own accord and that they felt an immense sadness emanating from it. After picking it up, one visitor even thought the doll had a pulse, almost as if it were alive. Carrie, looking for answers, sought advice from psychics who told him the doll was crafted by a Romanian gypsy. The gypsy tragically lost his son in a drowning accident and he hoped his son's spirit would possess the doll and reside there so he wouldn't have to part ways. Carrie named the doll Letta Me Out, or Letta for short. Carrie still owns Letta and says he will continue to keep her despite the strange happenings. He feels that misfortune might befall the next owner should he ever sell or pass Letta along. If dolls could reveal to us all the things they've seen, Amelia the doll would have many tales to tell. Hailing from 19th century Italy, Amelia is one of the oldest known haunted dolls. She was gifted to King Umberto I, who ruled Italy from 1878 until his assassination in 1900. Just before his death, King Umberto allegedly passed Amelia along to his friend and the commander of his royal guard, Alvado Bellina who gave the doll to his daughter, Marie. Marie carried the doll with her through the First World War and into the Second. One day, Marie and the doll were on a train ride in Italy when a bomb exploded, destroying the railroad cars. Marie survived, but she insisted that Amelia be recovered from the rubble, as it was all she had left of her father and the former king. A woman managed to find the doll, but she died in a subsequent explosion. It is believed the spirit of the woman who sacrificed her life for the doll now resides within it. Marie loved the doll so much that she even named her daughter after it, but the doll allegedly opens and shuts its eyes and cries in the middle of the night, the spirit trapped inside calling out in despair, even though the original voice box stopped functioning decades ago. You can find almost anything on eBay, including allegedly haunted items for those curious about the uncanny and supernatural. And in June 2004, curiosity was exactly what led Anthony Quinta to scour the site searching for haunted collectibles. And that's when he came across a listing for a doll named Harold. The listing claimed Harold was possessed by a spirit and cursed. To Anthony, Harold seemed unremarkable in every way, but even so, he purchased the doll. The seller, however, offered Anthony his money back. She said she feared for his safety, as she believed two of her friends died in connection with encountering the doll. Anthony, who always carried a healthy dose of skepticism, shrugged off the warning and said, a deal's a deal. Immediately after Harold arrived in the mail, Anthony tested the doll's electromagnetic field, anxious to see if he would get a high reading. But there was nothing. Anthony put Harold in a box with a crucifix and bottle of holy water, just in case, before storing him away for eight years. It wasn't until 2013 that Anthony rediscovered Harold and brought him back out. He posted pictures of the doll online, hoping to creep out some of his friends, but the reaction he received was much more disturbing. Friends and strangers alike who saw the pictures came down with everything from dizzy spells to severe migraines and back pain. Those who saw Harold in person said the doll moved on its own and even changed its expression at will. Some even claimed Harold bit or grabbed them hard enough to leave behind bruises. Anthony took Harold to several psychics who all concluded the doll harbored not one spirit, but several, one of which was possibly even demonic. 
Anthony documents all of the strange occurrences on a website dedicated entirely to Harold the Haunted Doll, and he's even been featured on an episode of Ghost Adventures. To this day, Anthony is still trying to unravel the truth behind Harold and all of the entities residing within him. Now be sure to head over to my good friend Mikey's channel for some more haunted doll horror. She and I work together filming a special Halloween collaboration for you all. You can press on screen now to watch, and I'll see you next time.